New chapter. We're in 9-1. We're going to take a look at radians. So we're going to define an angle, examine angle measure, draw angles in standard position. That's a key one. And then we're going to define what radians are. Because we haven't seen these things called radians before. Nothing too complicated, but we're going to take a look at it. Now let's introduce all of this different stuff from geometry just to refresh ourselves. A ray is described as a half line has a point and it goes on forever in a certain direction. An angle is two rays together. So one going in this direction, one going in that direction. And when you have these two rays, they meet at a point called the vertex. So we call that the vertex and angles are created with that. There's such things as straight angles, which means that this rotation here is 180 degrees. Now there's actually two ways for us to actually measure an angle, and this is kind of weird, but if we have this shape, we can measure the interior part of that shape, and that has some sort of angle measure. And we can also add the outside. We have to be very careful in how we name it, so we know which we're kind of trying to measure. We have to be very careful of that. And so remember, we have these two different types of angles. Right? That's why I have these names, beta and alpha, for these particular angles. We look at all of our values in what we call standard position. Now it's just a way we orient the angle. The initial side is always going to be facing this way. The initial side is always going to be facing this way. And we rotate either in this direction or we rotate in this direction from that initial side. Now where the angle ends up, we call that the terminal side. When we rotate counterclockwise, that is a positive rotation. When we rotate clockwise, that is a negative rotation. Now when we're in this standard position, it becomes much easier for us to actually be able to measure what the angle is. And so to define that, an angle is said to be in standard position if its vertex is the origin and its initial side coincides with the positive x-axis. That is a good way to think of it. So I can draw a 135 degree angle in standard position. Now we have to kind of think about how can I break this up, right? In my brain I'm thinking if I know that we have everything in quadrants, right? And we know that one of these is 90 degrees. So I need to be thinking to myself, oh, how can I break this up? Well, this is 90 degrees plus 45 degrees. Perfect. So then I start here. Here's my initial side. It has to travel 90 degrees plus 45. So there's my plus 45. And so we have 90 plus 45. And so this red right here, this is my 135 degree rotation. So I can say that that's 135 degrees. Let's try another one. So I need to think how this breaks up in my head. So I know that's 90 and 90, that's 180, and then I'm left with 20 degrees left over. So my initial side, it's going to travel 90 degrees, 90 degrees, and then it's going to have about 20 degrees left over. Now it's not accurate, it's not like super accurate, but it's about right, and that's okay. Now let's introduce radians. So the real number pi is defined to be a ratio of the circle's circumference to its diameter. Now because of that, because we know that pi is the circumference over the diameter, it actually has a very exact way that we can measure rotation within that circle. And so this is kind of weird, but if I actually, instead of 180 degrees, I could actually travel a distance of pi within my circle because pi equals circumference over diameter. Well, the diameter cancels out and you're left with pi. And so this distance here, that's the travel of pi. And so 2 pi, that gives me, me the entire rotation. 
So that means if I wanted to cut it up into halves, if I know that one rotation is pi and I cut that in half, well then that becomes 90 degrees. So pi halves, pi halves, pi halves, pi halves, which gives me the same two pi that I would have here. What if I had pi thirds or pi fourths? You know, that means I'm cutting this up into fourths. So one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths, five fourths, six fourths, seven fourths, eight fourths. Because the entire thing should be two pi, or half of this, if I add these together, that should give me pi. I can cut it up into thirds. So one third, two thirds, three thirds, four thirds, five thirds, six thirds. You can cut it up into six. One six, two six, three six, and then all of those other six, right? And if you look, there's going to be 12 of these slices. Six on top, six on the bottom. And then, like I already stated, the entire thing is 2 pi. So we're going to do the same thing now. Draw the orientation in standard position. So if I want to do a rotation of 4 pi thirds in standard position, that tells me I need to cut this up into thirds. So so there's one third, two thirds, three thirds. And so do the same thing down here. And so there's my four pieces. I'll do green. So here's my initial side. It's going to rotate all the way. There's my terminal side. And that's my angle. Because each of these pieces here, this is a, what's one pi thirds, two pi thirds, three pi thirds, and then here's four pi thirds. Let's try four pi six. So what this is saying is I need to cut it up into six. So if this is half, so one, so they're each of the, let's say, I know it's not super accurate, but it's pretty close, but each of those is a six, so I need to go over four of them. So we start with our initial side, one, two, three, four, and there's my terminal side. And so that rotation there is four pi six. So let's close today's lesson. What did we learn today? Well, we learned about an angle. We examined angle measure, how to draw angles in standard position, and defined radian measure.